Hello, I am Patrick Morgan, CEO of Morgan Scientific, and I am proud to show you one of our key pulmonary function systems. This is the Transair 3, which is an ideal instrument for small practices or busy uh, labs that want to do flow volumes, single breath diffusion, uh, MIPS and MEPS, cough peak flow, and challenge. It's an instrument that can also give you a measure of lung volume, although if lung volume is a priority, we would prefer that you utilize a helium dilution system, like our spiral model or a body plethysmograph. This instrument contains oxygen and CO analyzers, as well as a helium analyzer. And it's designed, like all of our instruments, for minimal service requirement. Indeed, the only service required on this unit would be to change an oxygen cell about every year to 18 months and the CO cell every four years. So it's an extremely low cost of maintenance instrument with fantastic longevity. The valve, the patient valve here, is all driven by a single cylinder of diffusion gas. Uh, it's pneumatic, requires absolutely no service maintenance whatsoever. The other feature you'll see underneath the valve are what we affectionately call our ugly bags. These are used for the measure of single breath diffusion and are key ingredients to obtaining reproducible and reliable diffusion results on small children and very sick adults. There is no demand valve in this system. Everything is measured at atmospheric pressure so that the patient comfort when doing the diffusion test is absolutely uh, perfect. The valve uh, is adjustable in height uh, by moving the arm. And pretty much you can see that all tests are done using a bacterial viral filter to keep the patient isolated from the system and anybody else that's been breathing on it. So now I'm going to take you through the software in a kind of brisk uh, route so you can see everything that this instrument can be capable of doing. Our Compass software that you're going to see here is a product that we're extraordinarily proud of. Uh, it's the result of nearly 15 years of work with top teaching hospitals around the United States and it continually grows in its innovation. And part of our approach as a company that's a little different to the others in this market is that our emphasis is on the continuing innovation of software because pulmonary function hardware really hasn't changed much in many years. It's the software that's changing. So with this software, um, we provide remote uh, access service and support, and we also provide updates at least once, or if not twice a year. For that, we ask the customers to pay a very modest Compass license fee. The license fee is approximately the cost of three pulmonary function tests per annum. So it's very minimal, but it keeps the customers always right up to date. Um, I'm going to skip calibration because it's so simple and straightforward. I'm going to move straight into testing. And typically with Compass, this can be on a large hospital network or standalone. Uh, it's SQL uh, database in its construction, uh, so it's very reliable, um, very fast, and also has capability for testing hundreds of thousands of patient tests. So we're going to start by searching for our patient. All the patients are stored in the SQL database. This happens to be a subject we've tested before, so when I search for um, this particular subject, it's going to recall her previous information. Once the patient has been found, uh, it gives us the opportunity to change height and weight if that's changed on the new visit. And also 
Um, change physician name, perhaps she's changed to a different physician that's looking after the, this particular case. And COMPASS is equipped to enter both ICD-9 and ICD-10 records if you wish to do so. The entering of diagnostic codes can be very useful in, in the future if you want to search your database for certain conditions. So you could search by uh, sex, uh, um, diagnosis, age range, whatever it is, so that the whole research query can be done directly from this product. Having entered the patient information, I can save the test and go into our testing module. Here you can see uh, all of the tests that are available with the Transair. It has a barometric pressure and temperature sensor built in. So it's read those values so that the uh, lung volumes are corrected to BTPS conditions. We're going to begin with flow volume loop, perhaps one of the most recognizable tests in the American Pulmonary Function Lab. Uh, and to start a test, we can simply click or press the space bar. And here we're presented with a screen that shows us both volume time and flow volume together. So I ask the subject to take a deep breath in, blast it out, keep it going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and as she's doing so, I'm looking at the FET meter that's got to six seconds, and then ask her to breathe all the way in. The meter is designed to look at the time of forced exhalation, so we want that in adults to be six seconds or greater, to meet ATS criteria. Beside the result, there is a hollow check mark indicating that we did indeed meet the ATS criteria for that loop. To repeat it, I simply hit the space bar. And on this test, you'll see a second meter appear, which gives us what this flow volume is, what the FVC is compared to her best. Deep breath in. Blast it out, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And if that meter is beyond 95% and the FET meter, deep breath in, is beyond six seconds, then we know that we're going to meet ATS criteria. We also have rather seductive um, in incentive screens for this test. Um, so the first one that I'm going to show you is a popular screen that people like, which is uh, Flying Dragon. And here we ask the patient again to take a deep breath in, blast it out, and we have both graphic and sound animation here for the testing. And she's gone past six seconds and is empty, deep breath in. And it will encourage the patient with different incentives uh, we have options of choice for incentive screen. Uh, another popular one is the birthday cake. Um, we can do the same thing here, just so that you can see the cake operating. And again, a deep breath in. Blast it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. The incentives themselves can be scaled to whatever the user prefers. So you can set the incentive to be, say, 105% of your best FVC to encourage the test. If at any time the software spots um, a part of the effort which is not sufficient, it not only alerts the user, it explains what was wrong. In this case, the test did not exceed six seconds. When two or more of the tests from testing of three efforts meet both effort and reproducibility, the check marks go solid to indicate that we've completed really good quality flow volume loops. At this stage, what I want to show you is what so often happens in a lab. I give the patient a bronchodilator, the telephone goes or there's some interruption and I'm distracted and I come back and I run a further test. And it is only during the test that I suddenly realize, 
oh my goodness, this should have been a post-bronchodilator test, and we've saved it as a pre-bronchodilator test. Okay, deep breath in. So here we have the ability in, that, in the Compass software to drag that result down and put it into the post column. Um, so you've got that ability to correct a mistake if it's been made. Pretty much um, the technician can rely on the software looking at the best results by ATS to determine what gets printed on the final report. But if they wish to, they can right click and choose discrete data or discrete graphic elements. They can choose the inspired and expired data, the inspired and expired graphic and override what the computer decides is the best test. That's pretty much completed the flow volume so that we can now move into slow vital capacity. On the Transair 3, the lung volume that we measure is total lung capacity during the diffusion test. So in order to get the other subdivisions of lung volume, we must do a separate slow vital capacity test. So we simply click on slow vital capacity and hit the space bar, and the patient just breathes away quietly. Now to obtain reliable lung subdivisions, we want to make sure that we establish their FRC. So I'm letting the subject just breathe quietly and so that FRC is established. Now take a deep breath in, all the way in, and steadily all the way out. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And a very useful item here is the percent meter that you see there in green. Most patients will have a slow vital capacity that's the same or greater than forced vital capacity. So that meter is very useful for the technician while they're doing the test. They can also, if they prefer, they can adjust where the end tidal position is so that expiratory reserve volume and inspiratory capacity are measured properly. The next test we can show you here is MVV. We simply ask the patient to do maximal breaths in and out, and then we start capturing it on the screen. We want them to go to 12 seconds, but I'll be kind in this demonstration and stop it. If we see a test between 6 and 12, we can extrapolate what the MVV should be. The computer has said, ooh, that's not a very good test because you didn't really get to 12 seconds. Um, I'm still going to accept it anyway. A very nice touch here is that we show on the results the FEV1 times 35 and the FEV1 times 40. If their MVV is between those ranges, it's very likely that what you've captured is an excellent effort. For diffusion, we now go into our diffusion testing. And what happens here is, first of all, the small bag is evacuated and a vacuum is held. That's the bag that we're going to collect an alveolar sample from. The larger bag is also evacuated and then it will be filled with enough gas for the patient to do the diffusion test. This instrument is extraordinarily frugal with its use of gas. Uh, a typical H cylinder will allow you to do 250 complete PFT studies, which might be two or three diffusions per study if necessary. At this stage, the bag is all set. It's ready at atmospheric pressure. So for the patient, it's extremely comfortable and normal to take a full breath in. We absolutely reject the use of demand valves in our products because it often causes a gag reflex and it's uncomfortable for the patient and can cause spurious diffusion results. If you have a hemoglobin, it can be entered now or later. That's up to, up to the user. 
And now we're really ready for the test. And so we simply ask the patient to breathe normally and then take a breath in and all the way out. Right out, right out, right out, right out. When she nearly empty, I hit the space bar. Deep breath in, hold your breath. The yellow area is the area that's required to meet ATS and breathe all the way out. And the test, off you come. The test is over for the subject and we now gather the gas information. The timing of the gas measurement here is very deliberate. It's deliberately slowed down. This is counterintuitive to those companies that feel that everything should be rapid diffusion. Here the diffusion is traditional measurement and it's slowed down deliberately so that the gas that's in our subject's lungs can be cleared out and when we repeat the test we know we're getting a reliable second diffusion result. So here it's very unusual on the Transair 3 if you've managed to get the patient to full inspiration to ever have to do more than two diffusions. So the screen is showing you that it has now captured the expiratory sample. We return the analyzers to room air conditions and then we'll measure the bag sample. The reason we do this is not only for the timing, but if you had delayed for a long time between tests, it's possible that some of the helium in the sample has diffused through the plastic. So we make sure we measure both the inspiratory and the expiratory gases exactly. So here we see the uh, inspiratory gas now being analyzed. And a very nice kind of check for the technician that everything is looking good is that we expect those gas results to peak at 100% on the scale. That means that what's in that inspiratory bag matches what's in the cylinder and there are no leaks and everything is working properly. The Transair 3 uh, has special features on it that look for leaks in bags or valves that aren't working properly. It's really an infallible system for PFT testing. So now we've gathered the results there for the diffusion and ordinarily we would go on now and measure a second test. We're not going to do that here for purposes of time. Uh, but you can see that we've got our result and again uh, we have an, an ATS check mark. And you'll notice that on the screen you have alveolar volume, which is the lung capacity using helium. The TLC value there is a TLC value that's gathered by nitrogen recovery in the same test. Also on the Transair 3, we have the ability to do MIPS and MEPS. So we ask the patient to breathe normally. <laughs> okay, breathe all the way out. Right out, right out, right out. And when the shutter goes, suck in, 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 in against the shutter. And there we have our measurement of maximum inspiratory capacity. For Maximum expiratory capacity, it is the reverse, all the way in. Blow hard, blow hard, blow hard, and relax. And there we have our measures of MIP and MEP. And again, these would be repeated to make sure that we've got reliable results. A further measure for neuromuscular function is one that's very popular in the children's hospitals and is now being adapted in some adult sites is a measure of cough peak flow. And this is one you may not have seen before. Here the patient is just breathing normally and you're seeing a scale that's showing flow, flow rate versus time. We simply ask the patient to take a deep breath in and cough hard. Let them relax for a, a moment. Deep breath in cough hard and that can be repeated. The advantage of cough peak flow is it's highly reproducible because the one thing pulmonary function 
uh, patients know how to do is to cough. So that's a further measure. Um, the instrument is also capable of doing challenge testing. The challenge testing can be cold air, it can be methacholine or aridol, any challenge test sequence that you want to do. A further option with this instrument um, can be added by using the non-in wrist ox. So with this particular device, you could also add six minute walk into your reporting. It's very simple to use. You can gather the resting, the six minute walk, and the recovery data, and it's automatically read into the Compass software so that it's very easy to add six minute walk to any practice. If all the testing is finished, the technician can add blood gas information, or perhaps you've now got hemoglobin that you want to enter in. You've also got the ability, of course, for six minute walk or for pulse oximetry. Um, and the technician also has the chance to add any notes. Notes can be pre-configured so that you're just clicking on uh, pre-configured notes. And pretty much at this point, the testing is complete. And simply, if we wanted to produce a report, we can go to the report screen. And this can either be printed or obviously captured as a, as a PDF. So that is a rather brisk run through all that the TransAir 3 can provide. And I want to just summarize by saying this is an absolutely superb instrument, very accurate in all its measures of flow volume, diffusing capacity, MIPS and MEPS challenge. Uh, it's not the, pr the product you would choose if you were emphasizing lung volumes. Uh, we would prefer that you look at another option for lung volumes, but it does provide a measure of TLC and lung subdivisions as well if necessary. The cost of maintaining this is incredibly low, and we have the ability within our software to offer remote support for customers having any questions or problems. But most importantly, customers have direct contact with us. Uh, it's rather unusual for a CEO to sit here and say to you, here is our product, this is what it does. I don't know how many of my fellow CEOs could demonstrate their products in this field. But in our company, all of us are product specialists and we're proud of what we do. If you have a problem, we want you to speak to us. If you have new ideas or features that you would suggest for the software, we encourage that and we would love you to be working with our software team. Thank you very much for your time. Please don't hesitate to contact me personally if you have any questions. Thank you.